Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Dishonored 2. We're making our way to the red building over there, Overseer's office for a side mission. What the hell is this? Can I do anything here? I can probably slam it. Shit, that could attract guards. You would think I should be able to interact with something over here. The cursor also changes, it becomes a bit bolder, so it looks like something interactable. But I'm pressing the interact button and nothing is happening. Alright, whatever. Um, the thing is... I, ah, an eye control panel by Karnaka Electrical Instrument Company Circonos. Eye control. Is there an eye over here? Yes. This is an eye, I think. This is called the wall of light. I already deactivated it in the previous episodes, like an electric electrical barrier. I think you can maybe, yeah, turn it on the guards or something with reversing the eye uh, friends or foe mechanic. I don't know, but let's check it out later. Um, there are quite a lot of guards actually over here. Two all at the back. No one says no to me. One over there. One over there. So that's four. One dude over there. He will turn around. So I have to be careful. He spotted me uh, previously. Uh, so that's five, six. Seven, uh, some seven guards over here that I would like to thin out. And I think a good thing always is to start with the guys high up because they have the biggest um, overview. So let's see if we can get that guy up there. Um, here we go. I find it annoying that Corvo immediately draws his knife when you use Link. Would like to have those two mechanics separated, to be honest. Drawing your power and drawing your knife. Um, holy shit, I can get all the way over there. Oh shit, no. God damn it, spotted. Oh shit, I did not save the game, but I, I'm not that far back. We were here in the previous episode picking up a bone charm, a painting, and something else. What the hell was that something else indeed? It was a bone charm. A painting. Alright, we already read all this. Uh, one second. Still not fully done with what we all have here. So, the bone charm I equipped and I picked up something else. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think it are runes indeed. I have now three runes. Uh, and then I can upgrade abilities. Maybe there are some cool abilities. I don't know. Everything seems to be grayed out. So probably it's all still locked. So you have runes, you have bone charms, you have enchantments, you have powers. I must say it's a little bit convoluted. All these different categories. Which all do more or less the same. And that is upgrading Corvo. So why not just call it bone charms and put everything of these stuff under bone charms but 
Yeah, okay. I do understand the difference between powers and bone charms. Bone charms are more passive things. Powers is more like active abilities. But these enchantments, yeah, these are also passive things. So I don't really see the difference between enchantments and bone charms. Maybe that's just me. Uh, you could group them together if it was up to me, but probably it's because you have to feed enchantments via runes and bone charms via uh, whale bone and maybe one or the other is more s needs to be more scarce than the other for the game's economy to work or the leveling up system to be balanced i am not sure but we pick up a rune and a bone charm over here and now we are heading back let's exhaust her how are we supposed to get ahead here always paying off the grand guard their clothes seem a bit exotic. Right, we already heard that. Just exhausting her dialogue again. Just for completion's sake. Uh, now let's save the game. So we don't need to do that again. And let's see if I can now do a better job than before. The aim is the guy on the balcony. Somebody is seeing me. Ah, maybe the sound is from Blink itself. Probably. If I hold it too long, probably it just disappears, I think. Let's check that out. There's a learning moment. The sound is getting louder. And I hear some crackling. And nothing much more, actually. Alright, dead guy. They like spinoff, and I just can't get comfortable. Could maybe see me, but just about not. The lighting is pretty amazing in this game, I must say. Um, Alright, I actually don't really have a plan to get to the other side. Maybe if I get over there. I could get onto that second uh, lamppost. There's also way down below, uh, an access point, maybe. Ah, and there's a stairs over there. Like here. She's made a dog's and then of the we whole thing. get... And who's got to clean it up? Me, of course. Over As there. Always. Very nice. All right, slowly but surely we're getting closer. Oh, somebody's seen something. Now we're all on edge. My heart can't take much more of this. All right, let's see what the heart has to say. Tired of the sound of my own voice. It's like I'm talking to a stone uh. wall for all they listen. Oh, when others might choose, choose to draw blood, blood, you find another, another way. way. Yeah, we already heard that one. This, I think, is, is my highest praise. praise. Alright, how the hell am I getting there? Really annoying that the game, even without the HUD enabled, fully disabled, there are still character outlines, like that guy over there. He has like this weird yellow outline. Anywho. Uh, yeah, let's just get through the... Via the roof. Let's just get over here. And then we go. Ah, there's something over there, but I will explore this area once I have thinned out the crowds. I think that would be a good idea. Like so. And now would be a good time to save.
I would say. Ah, there's actually, check it out, you can... There are so many little hidden areas, so much fun. I think this is a secret area. Let's check this out. Alright, we have... I don't think it's a guard, it's just a regular dude over there. Right. Oh shit, this is not a secret area. Alright, I will check it out over here later. First I want to get rid of the freaking guards. Like so. Holy shit, you really can go anywhere. Oh, there's a guy on top of the roof even. Over there. So let's first take out that guy. And also explore over here. Oh, we're dealing with some blood flies. Here we go. I hear one more, goddammit. I have the feeling that often those blood flies, they clip into the walls in the environment. I hear him, but I don't see him. All right, a room. Let's check if that is a rune indeed, because now we have three runes and now we have yeah, still three runes. So what the hell are those things? I must say that's a bit annoying. Ah, I can actually upgrade stuff over here. This is all grayed out, but these are not. Um, anywho, I really would like to know what they are. It are not bone charms, because I have the same amount of bone charms. It are not uh, whale bones, that's to the right. I ha had to, I still have to. I also don't think it are runes carried, because I had three and I still have three. So. It's a little bit annoying, but whatever. Let's see if we can upgrade something here. Increase your health and resilience. Your health is increased, allowing you to sustain more damage from attacks, explosives, or falling. Nope, I will just try to avoid all those situations. Strength, throw objects further. Strategic tip, distract enemies from a greater distance with sound by throwing an object such as a bottle or target an enemy directly with a thrown object dealing more damage on impact yeah you can actually also knock out i should not forget that enemies by just throwing a bottle against their heads i think unaware enemies can generally be knocked out if hit in the head by thrown object but with this upgrade it's possible even in combat all right i'm going with that one i think but let's see for the rest reflexes block to deflect projectiles nope agility increase your jump height and distance nope yeah, this one could actually also be handy for higher ledges, but you can also just use blink for that, I would say. Shadow kill, turn unaware enemies to ash as they die. Nope, I will be non-lethal. Craft your own unique bone charms with some chance of corruption. Uh, that is for later on, I'm going to do that. Blood thirst, build up adrenaline in combat, then trigger brutal melee fatalities. Nope, I would take this one if it would also have like cool non-lethal uh, takedowns, but I wonder uh, whether that's the case. It's explicitly mentioned fatalities, so I don't think it's non-lethal. I am going with strength. Here we go. Um, here we go. Very nice. 
very nice. Uh, and yeah, I still don't know what I've picked up here. I will have to check that out later. It's probably me just being dumb. But it's just a bit stupid. Here. It's not a rune. It also didn't look like a rune. Like the one below in the middle of the screen. And yeah, it did look a bit like a bone charm, I would say. Like the one in the. next to Corvo's head in the, the circle to the left. It, it looked like something like that, but. I picked it up. And ah, bone charms owned three. I thought I only had two. So do I have a new bone charm then? Yes. All right. So it's a bone charm indeed, because this one I already had. This is a new one. I uh, mix it up. I thought I had two in this menu, but I already had one equipped, and then it disappears from this menu. So now with the new one, it's back to two again here. Um, albinos, red swarms include more white reds. Yeah, what does they do? I have no idea, but let's just accept. Uh, oh, let's just. Uh, equip it, why not? And let's read a bit. Abandoned notebook. It was the month of Earth three years ago. The sky of Karnaka was full of stars. I remember it all clearly because that was the day I lost my position at the Royal Conservatory. I spent the night on this very roof drinking and staring up at those points of light so far away, looking for some kind of answer. One constellation stood out, a whale, with a bright blue star for an eye. It was beautiful, comforting somehow, like it was watching over me. And the day after that, with my head still pounding from drink, I found something in a puddle in the streets. Made of whalebone carved with odd markings. A good luck charm. I thought, I thought, and it worked for a long time, everything got better. But now my luck has left me, like everyone, everyone I cared about and everything I owned. Like everyone I care about and everything I owned. It's silly, but I came back up here hoping that if I could see that kindly star-eyed whale in the sky again, maybe things would pick back up. I'll wait here watching. When it comes back, I'll wave at it and hope for another blessing. I don't know what else to do. Pretty nice writing, to be honest. Really simple, really sh pretty short, but it does convey a sense of desperation, so to say. looking a bit for secret areas because I do think you can actually maybe cross those roofs as well for instance there's something over there I'm not sure or that's maybe just one of those supports for the railway I'm not sure or it's something on the roof just behind the roof over there. I'm not sure what this is. It doesn't look like one of those supports. It looks higher and a different shape. But let's check that out later on. And for now, clear it out over here. Is there anything? There, no, I already checked that out. Um, 
a shame that the textures in the mountain, a mountain, are yeah, this glitchy. See them moving about, shadows or something. Anywho, um, ah, there are actually two guys on the roof over there. So let's quickly study their pattern a bit. One guy is totally mesmerized and looking at stuff, the other guy is walking about, it seems. And the one guy is leaning over pretty long, giving ample opportunity to choke him out. comes back all right um, this is pretty much checked out I really like the water effects and the expansive expansiveness of this coastal environment feels pretty wide open even though it's not like a huge open world setting well one second i really do like it it could very well be that for instance one of these windows would have been accessible as a secret area because i do think there are quite some of those in this game and i really like that We're getting closer, but of course we need to be careful with the guy returning because he will be looking in this direction. Let's just first try to take him out. How the hell do I get up there? Can I climb those? pipes I think I can actually or not I have no idea it looks climbable all right there's the other guy I wanted to take out um, yeah I'm a bit indecisive really sure what to do here that window I'm not sure whether it's open or closed it looks to open to me actually right um, shall I check whether I can climb that rain pipe. I doubt it. Ah, there's somebody standing over there. Right. He looks like um, the outsider. Oh, it's a she. Right. Can we climb this? Nope, get damn it. Oh shit. Now how the hell do I get back up? Ah uh, whatever, I will just try to take the guy out on the balcony over there. Let's just try and make a little bit of progress. Crew, 
It is off because they have turned their backs on tradition and on the seven strictures themselves. A wanderer is a friend to the outsider. I never doubt that. A young girl came to me on the 14th day of the month of harvest. I will never forget her words. She looked up at me and asked what shrines to the outsider could be found across the aisles. She affected a look of innocence, but beneath it I saw guile. My suspicions arose at once, and I questioned her. All right, good enough for me. Sharply, until she confessed to playing alone in an empty woodcarver's shop at the edge of town. <laughs> Each day for a week, she crept back to that place. And there in the cellar, she found cloth of purple and red ah, suspended from the walls and a wretched altar of candles burned low. Some small trinkets of bone and a few coins left by those within the outsider's wicked cabal. Those cursed figures who hunch and shamble just... Ah, that's a way to get up on the roof, I guess. Or maybe not. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the overall objective, Anamaya Station. I the lights of our city, whose faces we do not recognize. Alright, somehow my blink is not working. Yeah, goddamn. Oh shit, I turned it. <laughs> All to the max. I don't get any. Um... Regeneration. Alright, I cannot even change the difficulty here. So yeah, I really put it, I made it, I set everything to max or the most difficult, even above the um, default highest difficulty. And now that bites me a bit. Because, ah, here, difficulty. I just overlooked it. What I did put off as well is like regular difficulty that's very hard. And this one I kept as it is. That time is slowed when accessing the weapon wheel. But these three I also put to the max actually. That's mana replenish. And I'm, I think I might uh, keep this one enabled because it will be yeah, very limiting if I cannot even make small jumps. So I will keep that. Ammunition quantity, I will uh, dial that to the minimum elixir speed uh, that's the replenish uh, speed yeah i will keep it at default as well i had it at very slow but i will keep it at default because the thing is i, d I hardly find that much mana in the world so yeah or maybe yeah it is actually pretty cool if I try to put it uh, keep everything at the hardest stealth visibility I also mix that one out high visibility now you know what I will just see how far I get with everything mixed I will just need to find my mana and then it will also be much more valuable once you find it normally in games like this you find mana but it really doesn't matter because you already have like 10 files or it's uh, auto regenerates anyways um, yeah, so, um, by the way, there's no, uh, saving prompt, but that's because I'm canceling out of it. I didn't press confirm. So anyways, everything is maxed to the hardest difficulty except I want to keep the weapon wheel slowing it down the time because that gives me a little bit of a breather 
Um, no, just keep it as it is. Uh, yeah, so I cannot jump up. I will have to recognize and whose voices are strange to us. The girl Find was taken way. from her home the next night, locked in a cage of iron and toppled into the canal. Oh um, shit, I thought there would be a way corruption in this building here, but there is not. For the safety of all those who lived around her, all of you, we harden ourselves to the cries of the apostate, to the heretic, and in doing so, right. we save count. Does this mean I'm just screwed? <laughs> It does look like it. Holy shit. That guy There's was turning from around. the horrible discord that awaits them beyond death. The Abbey will not allow the shadows of the boy to fall upon you. Alright, I am a little bit screwed because I don't really see a way in the building now. We will brand it. But let's just see how far we get. Like so. The light or the flame as we must to keep our charges from everlasting pain and suffering. To prevent even one among us from wandering through that endless night for time without end. Ah, well lived. check it out. The seven is the end. This works. All right, let's hope we will find some mana. All right, if I break this, I will probably be hurt. Let's try it. Nope. Nobody here. I wandering gaze. One wandering gaze, two lion tongue. Restrict the wandering gaze that looks hither and yonder for some flashing thing that easily catches a man's fancy in one moment but brings calamity in the next for the eyes are never tired of seeing nor are they quick to spot illusion a man whose gaze is corrupted is like a warped mirror that has traded beauty for ugliness and ugliness for beauty instead fix your eyes to what is edifying and to what is pure and then you will be able to recognize the profane monuments of the outsider Number two, lying tongue. Restrict the lying tongue that is like a spark in a man's mouth. It is such a little thing, yet from one spark an entire city may burn to the ground. The father of a lie will suffer a punishment compounded by each person related. Better to live a life of silence than unleash a stream of untruth. The echoes of lies come back as the voice of the outsider. How to recognize the profane money. Instead, fix your eyes to what is edifying and what is pure, and then you will be able to recognize the profane monuments of the outsider. Yeah, so this is actually all contra the outsider. All these, holy shit, there are quite a lot of them. All these uh, placards. Restless hands. Restrict restless hands, which quickly become the workmates of the outsider. Unfeathered by honest labor, they rush to sordid gain, vain pursuits, and deeds of violence. Of what value are the hands that steal and kill and destroy? Instead, put your hands to the flow, the fork and the spade. For even the lowliest labor that is rigorous squeezes the muscles as a sponge, rinsing, impuri rinsing impurities from the mind and body. Roving feet. Restrict roving feet that love to trespass. They pay no heed to the boundary. One second. Is there also... Yeah, there's also a referral to the outsider in this one. In the start over there. Restrict roving feet that love to trespass. They pay no heed to the boundary stones of other men's fields. They wander into foreign lands only to return with their souls black, cunt by iniquity. 
Where have you straight that destruction? Now comes behind your. Where have you straight that destruction? Now comes behind you. Would you walk across burning coals or broken glass? Then why do you prowl into the homes of the honest or into the dens of hidden things? For the results is the same. You will fall into the void instead. Rest your feet on a firm foundation so that when the winds of the outsider shriek against you, you will stand firm and not be overthrown. Firm foundation so that when the winds of the outsider shriek against you, you will stand firm and not be overthrown. That last part is probably the power of repetition. Just repeat the exact same. R rampant hunger, that last sentence I meant. Um, one second. It almost feels a bit like, sorry, one second. This is like the quotation marks opening. Then we go all the way down and then here they are closing. And then here they are closing again without opening first. I think this is just a typo in the game. This is not uh, on purpose, I would think. That double last sentence. Rampant hunger. Restrict the rampant hunger or the intemperate will rise up amongst you like a virulent swarm. Devouring everything wherever they go even filth for what goes into your body poisons you and if you eat filth then filth is what you will vomit up surely the glutton will sell away birthright family and friends for a morsel of meat firm foundation So that when the winds of the outsider shriek against you, you will stand firm and not be overthrown. Again, that same last sentence. It's a bit weird. Wanton flesh. Restrict the wanton flesh. And again, it's like the quotation marks are closing over here. And then suddenly that weird firm foundation outsider sentence with quotation marks close here but not opening here i think it's a typo sorry i'm overthinking that um any who want and flesh restrict the want of flesh truly there is no quicker means by which a life can be upheaved and sifted than by the depredations of uncontrolled desire what avail is the concourse concourse of a prostitute question mark the attention of a loose companion nothing and what of the fruit of such unions only sorrow is born only misery is multiplied within these things the outsider dwells and then the last one of the eight commandments i would say restricts an uh, errant mind restrict an errant mind before it becomes fractious and divided can two enemies occupy the same body no for the first will direct it one way and the second another until they stumble into a ditch and its neck is broken. Likewise, um, uh, one second, um, where was I? Likewise, two contrary thoughts cannot long abide. One second. Likewise, two contrary thoughts cannot long abide in a man's mind, or he will become weak-willed and subject to any heresy. All right, so it's restrict an errant mind before it becomes fractious and divided. Can two enemies occupy the same body? No, for the first will direct one way and the second another until they stumble into a ditch and its neck is broken. Likewise, two contrary thoughts cannot long abide in a man's mind, or he will become weak-willed and subject to any heresy. All right, so we now know the eight commandments to live by in Kerneka, anti-outsider. Um, I am 
actually really looking for some mana because I would like to have the ability to jump to use my powers it will be much more difficult without it but yeah, it's actually pretty cool I think I hope I'm not limiting myself too much but it will be all the more gratifying if I can actually use uh, my powers because it will become a scarce good so to say brothers and sisters the Abbey needs you your aid as well as your devotion donate generously to help us build a new chapel in the dust district contact your local overseer if you wish to join hands in this endeavor all right there's some Abbey this all feels a bit like religious while we are now in an overseer's outpost I'm not sure if the overseer is like a religious zealot or something. I thought it was, it sounded more like just a security detail here, like a police station or something. But I think it is more religious natured. We have the lobby, that's where we are now. We have the second one is closed. We have the vice overseer, then we have the holding cells. Yeah, I do think it's a police station. Then we have five is closed, and then we have the rooftop. Um, clear. And it seems pretty empty. We are, of course, the main mission or main objective in this side mission is to obtain a body. So that probably also means carrying a body back to uh, where Mindy Blanchard is, all the way on the other side of the uh, this area. Um, so probably before I pick up that body, I will take out all the guys outside so I can just explore the area outside. And... Um, uh, yeah, casually carry that body over. Probably I wanted to do that first and then just go in here, get the body and get out. But I don't have any mana to climb up, uh, to jump up like higher places and stuff. So, and it really will be hard to take out those guys outside unseen. I think uh, only by crawling about. So I will just first clear out this area. Also take out the two guys all the way on the roof um, but yeah so it's a little bit of a reverse order I will clear out this building then I will hopefully find some mana then I will go outside I will clear the outside then I will go back into the building this building get the body and bring it back to uh, Mindy that's a bit the plan I was thinking of all right, this one is indeed closed. If you ask me, to all those faithful... All right, we already read this. Ah, no, these are also other uh, posters. To all those faithful to the Abbey of the Everyman, touch not the unclean thing nor the works that bear the markings of the outsider. The use of whalebone scrimshaw is heresy. Watch for roots and shrines in the abandoned places across our city. Report any who are in violation, lest they destroy the spirits of those in our community. Stay to the strictures. All right. I do hear a guy whispering, but that's probably... Uh, Upstairs. No mana over here. Right, that um, floor we will be clearing out in the next episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We are making very slow progress. 
but yeah i have to really get to grips with the mechanics and of course i'm also limiting myself quite a lot with the um, no mana regen ah there are actually quite some books here i can read let's quickly do that uh, the abbey of the everyman excerpt from a larger work on the history of the overseers the abbey of the everyman is the seat of religious power and inspiration for all overseers across the empire ah so there is a link between overseer and reli religion the order arose over the years to protect the common people from the ravages of the outsider until the need for a central bastion of authority was deemed necessary um, the order arose all right the imposing structure is a destination for pilgrims seeking refuge or guidance which imposing structure Many mistakenly attribute the Abbey's construction, ah, okay, the Abbey of the Everyman, to High Overseer Benjamin Holger, when it was actually Holger's successor, John Clevering, who laid the foundation. Shortly after the Abbey was completed, every overseer in the land gathered there and began a trek to Whitecliff. There, a great siege commenced as the overseers purged the region. The battle. Um, raged against heretics, witches, and thralls of the outsider. Though Holger was killed in the struggle, Whitecliff was cleansed and the ceremonial rites that followed lasted for a month, giving birth to many invocations and speeches which were inscribed in to tombs and carried back to the Abbey, where they are still revered today. And uh, one second. Alright, so that's all in Whitecliff. Excerpt, excerpt the seven strictures from a commonly distributed overview of the seven strictures. Surround your innermost being with these strictures and you will be saved. The seven strictures are your core principles. Ah, so it are eight uh, or seven uh, commandments. I thought it were eight. I'm just a bit of an idiot. I think I said eight earlier in this episode when reading them below in the hallway. Uh, the seven structures are a core principle thought and reinforced by overseer across the aisle. From these principles stem all manner of rules, social codes and beliefs about the cosmos. Wandering gaze, lying tongue, restless hands, roving feet, rampant hunger, wanton flesh and errant minds. All these behaviors must be restricted in order to keep one's heart free from malevolent influences. They are the inroads of the outsider. Alright, clear. Um, I'm just curious what did it say? Uh, invocations, the word in the last paragraph. I'm gonna check that meaning because I don't really know exactly what that means. Anywho, um, yeah, not a lot of progress. I'm going pretty slow, but yeah, it's me getting to grips with the uh, game. Um, hope you still enjoyed it somewhat. We will be uh, yeah, clearing out this building in the next episode. Hope to see you there. For the meantime, do not forget, always do. Keep on gaming. See you later.